have been in these caves for weeks in search of an ancient book of knowledge. They say one who finds this book is able to ask the book any question they want, and the book will give its best answer. And there it is over there. Oh, tell me, ancient book, please. How do I get more out of playing my games? Weeks of looking in a cave for a book and it tells me something that I've been doing since I was 13. I should've just stayed at home and watched Sex in the City. Video games are like cars in a way. They're fun, they're loud, they crash, but most importantly, they are sexy. However, sex appeal can wear off after a while. Listen, I like my Italian plumbers wearing mustaches and all, but after 35 years, I think it's time to switch it up. Now, the book isn't wrong. For a lot of people, modding games can be a great way to not only get more out of your games, but also be the gateway drug into the curious world of game development. I mean, Sega had the right idea of letting a group of Sonic ROM hackers and fan game makers to make Sonic Mania. These people who mod the games to to the extent that they did know the game inside and out. It's not just knowing the code, it's also knowing how to design the levels, how to make new characters, how to make the art style of new assets match the ones that are already in game. Video game modding is just as much of an art form as video game development. But I'm not talking about what game mods became actual games, because while those are really cool, game modding is something that's very unique, because you're not being told by a corporation what to do or what you can handle. The possibilities are limitless for what you can add or remove from a game. It's kind of hard to say when video game modding truly started. That's not to say people didn't mod their games, it's more so that tools were available to mod the game yourself. Technically speaking, things like a Game Genie is a game modding tool. It messes with the game's code temporarily to allow you to do things like this. But modding on a more public and larger scale wasn't really a thing until 1993 when the motherfucker of first person shooters came out. I think you know the one. I have never been more disappointed in you than in this moment right here. Doom had the first large scale modding community, and of course it did, because when a game went messing with the in-game files, it was much easier to do it on a computer. My insides are easy to salvage through to do what you please. Computer, oh, that's disgusting. Why would you say it like that? But am I wrong? When developing Doom, the game developers actually decided to keep modding in mind. So they made it so you can mod the game without actually messing with the game's engine. It separated the game's assets from the game engine in these WAD files. WAD standing for, where's all the data? <laughs> How cute. It almost makes me forget that this game is now owned by a company that showed off a game title and nothing else to build up hype for a game we knew nothing about. Believe it or not, this helped the sales for Doom, as its software didn't mind the game being modded so long as if it was the retail version of the game and not the demo that was being modded itself. And believe it or not, people did actually comply. The sales for Doom were very high for this reason, and it's kind of impressive to see how well the game did based on that kind of mod support it had. So you would think other companies would allow this for more games, right? Modding isn't really a selling point, nor is it talked about by developers or publishers. I can't imagine that some people are so enthusiastic to allow others to touch their work and do god knows what to it, but modding games on a PC became very popular during the early 2000s. Some modding tools were being made before games were even coming out. Maxis, the developers behind The Sims, actually released a modding tool allowing for users to mod the game before it even released. This made it so that there were mods at game launch. That's like having your identity stolen before you were born like how is my credit score so bad it was because my mother planned out my entire life before i was even given one i can't buy a house now thanks mom modding became really popular amongst pc gamers during this time to a point where in game there were tools to make the games feel more user customizable i'm talking world editors character customizers and level makers that were all put into games to allow users to make their own games within the world of the game itself while this may have been an attempt to stop unofficial modding that really didn't happen. Wow, a blank canvas in which I can do whatever I want with. I'm gonna fuck up the Mona Lisa instead. You just can't stop someone from modding a game. They will always find a way. No matter the encryption of the files or the hoops or the potential bricking of a game, people will always find a way to mod their games. It's not just for the sake of just modding the game either. It's a form of self-expression. People can add things to a game to not only improve it, but to add features they feel like should have been in the game in the first place. Or they could do it to have fun. I felt as if it needed just a bit more color. 
and also way less value than it had before. There are various different types of mods, and it's really impressive how modders can make mods that feel like they should have been official in the first place. While some mods are more aesthetically pleasing, like replacing art assets to make for a better looking game, or even replacing the button icons for emulation on PC. I mean, just look at this. This feels wrong. What the f is this thing? However, not all mods are for aesthetics. Some people add whole new game modes to existing games to create a new experience for it. Games like Counter-Strike, GTA 5, and Among Us were all modified to add new modes to the games. GTA 5's role-playing servers are mods, and they've become really popular in the community. Grand Theft Auto has a really big history with modding, and man, it's just not good. We're talking about full-on having sex with all of your clothes on. On the PlayStation 2, baby! Woo! The hot coffee mod for Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. It's what you would call an unofficial patch. These files were technically in the game beforehand, but just not accessible or enabled within the game. Someone went in, violated the game's insides, and out came CJ having sex with jeans on. How fun and, and, and hot? I don't know, people were weird back in the early 2000s. This mod caused a lot of controversy, making GTA San Andreas having an adult-only rating. FOR A MOD! That's like making Back to the Future rated X because my friend edited Marty McFly having a boner throughout the entire movie. Oddly enough, it changes a lot about the story when you do that, but still, it's nonsense. Yeah, the files were in the game already, but they didn't do anything unless you modded it. A 17-year-old who knows nothing about PC gaming, coding, and structure couldn't see these very hot and steamy moments because of that. But GTA mods ever since 4 have been so much fun. People go all out, adding an Iron Man or Spider-Man, Chaos Mods, Mod Loaders, I CAN PLAY AS A MONKEY! It's truly fun, and Rockstar's publisher, Take-Two, absolutely despises it. If you touch GTA 5 with any kind of mod, have fun. Installing mods on these games can sometimes be a pain in the butt, because companies just don't want you messing with their games. You gotta install mod tools, download sketchy files, realize you installed malware, and your computer now speaks Spanish. Poyosato Google Translate per questo e non e nemeno spagnolo. Why did I understand what you said? And why am I offended? But I think one of my favorite mods are the randomizer mods, taking item drops and locations and switching them all up. This is fairly popular within the Legend of Zelda games, adding a challenge to the games that involve more exploration. It's also big within the Pokemon games, where Pokemon you encounter are all randomized, meaning you can find very high-leveled and powerful Pokemon in tall grass. This kind of mod translates to almost any kind of game, even ones that are in the current generation we play on, like Super Mario Odyssey. It was really cool to see the Switch being modded so early in to its life. Now, yes, the hardware was outdated the minute it came out, that's why they were able to do it so fast, but still, it shows that modders won't stop until everything is moddable. I mean, there's nothing you can't mod. Now, I installed this mod on myself, where now I puke up old school internet gifts. Blech! Oh, I can add this to the collection! La mia esistenza e dolor. Just please stop talking, no one can understand you. Now, modding is easier on a PC than a console, since you have access to all the files on a PC. For consoles, it's hard if you don't know what you're doing, because one wrong step can lead you to your console being bricked. If the console knows there's something on it that shouldn't be, it just won't let you continue working on it, and Nintendo is the biggest bitch with this. On the Switch, if they catch you modding your console, not only does your console get bricked, but your Nintendo ID gets blacklisted, making it so you can't access any online features like the eShop and multiplayer. That's kind of f***ed up because Nintendo mods are some of the most fun out there. If we take a step back to the Wii days, this puppy was not only fun to mod, but it was kind of easy. Gotta thank Brawl for that, since the level editor could allow you to do something like this. I don't know what it is, it's kind of scary, but it works. It allowed people to download the homebrew channel, a way to load up mods into games. But let's say you didn't want to get a whole new channel just to do your modding glories. Say you just wanted to play one mod and it happened to be Smash Brothers Brawl. Well, I could do that too! Some people didn't like how Brawl played and said, fuck it, we'll do it ourselves." It makes Brawl play more like Melee, and it's really fun because you can use it as like a groundwork to actually do your own stuff with the game, adding new characters and such. I mean, that's what I did back in the day. In order to add characters that I really wanted to play as in Brawl, I would just do it like that. I would use Project M and then add more characters onto it or replace old ones. But now, I would rather just do Super Smash Bros. Infinite because it's a much better way to get more characters while keeping the old ones, and just look at this. This cast of characters is insane. It's like better than Ultimate in a way. Just too bad it's it's stuck on Brawl, but it, it's still a lot of fun, and I would highly recommend this because it, just like Project M, you can do it without modding your Wii as well. It's so much fun, but also it's prone to crashing sometimes if you mess something up. 
Someone called the nurse because of the Wii's flatlining. <laughs> the Wii was a really good friend of mine, and I'm, I'm so sad that he's gone now. Now, Project M isn't supported anymore, but Project Plus is. It's a spiritual successor to it and still receives updates to this day. The game even has Knuckles in it, and he's so cool. I mean, come on, look at him. My man doesn't even chuckle. Now, Nintendo isn't the only console that people like to mod, but I see more of their games being modded. Mod the Wii U to play GameCube games, or mod Mario Odyssey to play as Luigi, or even online multiplayer with four Marios running around. Play as Zelda in Breath of the Wild, or revive the entirety of Mario Kart Wii's online. The Wii's online service shut down, but that didn't stop fans from modding the Wii to enable this feature again. It became popular and kept the game alive even to this day. And I think that's the beauty of modding itself. It can keep older games alive for that much longer. Through new graphics, gameplay, and new features, it's just all so cool. What's not cool is when a company will take down mods to put them in an official re-release of a game that ends up getting recalled anyway. I mean, Rockstar has stated that they really don't mind the mods, but the publisher thinks otherwise. They took down a lot of graphics graphical enhancement mods for GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas for the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition. The game isn't optimized properly. It was riddled with bugs and oversights that Rockstar just had to take it down because of how poorly it was received. Now, this is an issue because these modders who devoted their time to a game that they loved now have their work just gone. Now, nothing dies on the internet, but it's gonna be really hard to find the mod again without running into malware or someone taking credit for the mod themselves. And if Rockstar was gonna go through with this plan anyway, why not? not just have hired the modders to make the models, or at least take care of the art direction. These people aren't just gamers, they themselves are developers, they are artists, and just to brush them aside is super disrespectful. The only company I've truly seen embrace modding has been Valve with the use of the Steam Workshop, a place where users can upload their mods through Valve's official service, and if the game enables this feature, it makes modding the easiest it's ever been. Just click subscribe and BAM, it's in the game. Now not every game on Steam has the workshop enabled, but the ones that do make it so the purchase of that game is so much more enticing since now you have endless possibilities. Look at a game like Gary's Mod. This is the literal definition of a sandbox game. It's meant to be messed around with to create games yourself. Any server you go on will have different rules and different modes, and that's all thanks to the Steam Workshop being so user and mod friendly. Bethesda also offers something like this with their games, and it even works on consoles too. They don't really advertise this though. I just found it out while researching for this video, and I'm clueless as to how it works. I think it requires a Bethesda account, so for consoles, Consoles, that's fine, it makes sense, but on PC, I'd rather just stick to the old fashioned methods because who the f wants a Bethesda account? But it is still cool that modding has official support like this. It makes me wish more companies would experiment with features like this. Official mod support would motivate people to learn more about game development, and it would give them a starting ground since making a game from the ground up is not that easy. I mean, game makers do exist. RPG Maker, Game Maker, Dreams, Nintendo Game Builder Garage, but this is still intimidating to someone who doesn't have ideas for a full game. Modding is like the baby steps, where you can add features you like and go even further with them. There are games in which modding is a huge part of that game's community, like Minecraft. People have worked on Minecraft mods and then have gone to work for Mojang, the game developer itself. The official horse mod in the game used to be part of the Mo Creatures mod, and now it's in the game itself. How cool is is that and I love that I think doing stuff like that is super inspiring you're telling me I can develop a mod and could possibly work for the game company that develops the game I mod for it's rare that it should be but it's the reason why some modders keep going the work while unofficial is still very impressive for game development some of my favorite mods from various games might never see a release including the Minecraft Aether mod a new end game adventure if you will the original is better than the sequel don't at me the DeLorean mod for GTA 4 I installed this and played this back on a tablet PC that ran Windows 8 and god damn it it was beautiful. I love Back to the Future and Liberty City is damn close to New York so yeah I like this mod. I like widescreen and graphical upgrades for mods for some of my favorite games. If it's an older game on Steam I usually go for the widescreen mod since it looks nicer on the monitor I play on. Beat Saber is virtually unplayable without mods. Like seriously you can do some cool shit with this game if you mod it. And finally there's Project M a big part of my childhood that got me into modding my Wii more and it's just so much fun to play with friends. I really do hope that one day modding becomes more supported. These people are game developers, and I cannot stress that enough. The time and effort they put into these mods is insane, and it's all for other gamers to experience. There's no real second motive behind it. I like to mod my games from time to time, and I don't think I'll ever stop. It's really a lot of fun. But now I got this dusty old book that can answer any question no demand, and might honestly be cursed because uh, on the way back I kept hearing a voice saying, Put it back. 
really ruined my Friday. Forced of resty rhyme or low aposto. You know, that's not a bad idea, but actually, I have an idea that might just be a tiny bit better. <laughs> yeah, that was the perfect idea. <laughs> Are you a demon? Uh, I guess. I'm gonna be completely honest, I have no idea why I'm here. Cool.